Hello friend, how is it going? Welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. And in this video it will be kind of storytelling, a lot of storytelling, not so much of repairs visible. But if you are up to story of mysterious misfire on the number one cylinder of this 2008 Toyota Tacoma, which is equipped with manual transmission, it's a four-wheel drive and has a four-cylinder engine, which is 2TRFE. If you are willing to listen and learn from it, you are in the right place. Grab your popcorn, enjoy, because it starts right now. And the story is for sharing the facts and making troubleshooting for others possible and maybe faster or easier in the future. So this vehicle has 180,000 miles on the odometer. A couple of years ago had entire head gasket job done by the local shop. The local shop apparently completely even removed that engine and did the head gasket and that lasted 10,000 miles and approximately two years ago. And the trouble started unfortunately again. Some other shop put another head gasket and new head this time and the vehicle was driving for one year good. This time apparently only like 4,000 miles. And recently there started misfires on the number one cylinder. And that's how the head gaskets on these two TRs, FEs, are going. They start leaking in the number one. The coolant disappears from the coolant reservoir, which is right here. And you have it overnight leaking in the number one and when you have the cold startup in the morning there is a presence of coolant therefore that causes the misfire in number one that's detected by the ECM by the computer and you kind of know that you have a head gasket problem. Recently this owner started having misfire in the number one. And this owner has his own mechanic and he was bringing it back to him again and again and again. Until that mechanic apparently lost it and said, I can't find it. I'm done with this. Please don't bring it back to me. Well, he somehow watches these videos, this YouTube channel, and he looked me up. And he called for appointment. So when I helped him one week ago, I took it in. He brought it in the evening. I put my pressure tester on it. Because there was stored the misfire on the number one. The vehicle was perfectly running. There was not slightest hesitation. He drove here. So I put it overnight on pressure tester of the cooling system. I came the next morning, took my camera and looked in every single cylinder. There was absolutely no coolant in the cylinders. Therefore, there was no problem with the, with the performance of the engine. Again, I started up perfectly running. There were no codes pending. Nothing was happening with it even after it was pressurized here overnight. So I charged only one hour despite the fact I looked on everything. I confirmed that that previous mechanic changed all the spark plugs. He changed all the coils. Then he was switching them, mixing them around. He was trying to fix everything. I cleaned the PCV valve which is on the back and I couldn't see any problems with it. So charge him hour and said sorry it's running perfectly 
However, if it ever comes back, please, I'm willing, willing to find out what's wrong with it. He called in like four or five days. He said, yep, the check engine light is back. I want to make appointment. Yesterday he called and he said, hey, it even got worse. The engine is running very rough and the vehicle will not drive over like 2500 RPM. It's driving only like 30, 40 miles per hour. Do you advise to tow it or drive it to your shop? I said, listen, this is your call. I'm not there. I don't know how it feels. Uh, do you have to make a decision, bring it to the shop? Either way, that's up to you. I will be not liable for making this decision. So he brought it here, dropped it off yesterday. This morning, I came in the parking lot. I started up. Very rough running. Finally, it's a good thing. Very rough running. I drove in, shut her off, scanned the computer. Again, P0301 is there. There is a misfire on this vehicle. So I remembered what I did in the past and I continued with this. I had no information if he, the previous guy, and you have to assume nothing. So I didn't know if he ever touched the injectors. I don't know how much time he spent on it. And what was the stage when the previous guy gave up on it? So I removed the whole rail, which is from the back to the front. And again, just to eliminate the, the number one injector, which is right there. Well, let me let me try zoom on it. Maybe I will make it between these things. So you can see it. You will see the electric connectors of it. It's right now in the middle of screen, that gray. Interestingly, some of them are gray and some of them, uh, well, these are the connectors. The connector to it in the back, electronic connector, where is it? One of them are browns and some of them are gray. Where are you? Oh, right there. So that's interesting. So I swapped the injectors and connected the wiring harness to everything, put everything back and I started up and sure enough you already know what's going on. Perfectly running. It's perfectly running. There's nothing wrong with it. Excuse that music. That's a very sad Somebody has a live event there outside and they put the people to the microphone who don't know how to sing and we have to listen to this already whole morning. I mean if you don't know how to sing you cannot even hear the note while you are sitting at the microphone and trying to sing and annoying the whole neighborhood. I don't know. Now we have to listen to it, because somebody decided to do that. <laughs> so where are we, my friend? Yeah, now I will bring up the word intermittent. I can see there is intermittent problem. Now you already know it's not related to the coolant, because the coolant, despite the fact it's a wrong one, and I told him it's not missing. The vehicle came running very rough. I drove it in running very rough. Yet after I wiggle everything around here, which means the wiring harness, suddenly it's running perfectly. So I realized that I need to let it keep running the engine and start pulling on everything. And as I disconnected the entire wiring harness from it, mounts it already fell back in it and I started lifting it and moving it I realized that there is finally I know what the problem is it's with the 
wiring harness it's the connector so you don't see that connector anymore here is one of them I will just show you this is how it looks like and the connector most likely is bad I already took it apart so you see these exposed wires right here I can see this one the thicker wire the the part the metal part inside it's actually kind of split so I think that's the problem you use this special picks to open uh, to remove the wires right these two wires were inside of this connector but because I had that pick, I didn't damage anything and was able to remove it. This will be completely replaced because these things happen. This is not something new underneath the sun. I already called Toyota and I will be able to show you in just a minute. They will deliver me entire replacement wiring harness. This is what I got from the dealer. I will try to show the number. I hope you can read it. And that's the connector right here. Aha. Too much of glare. I just need to take it out. So, this is what I got. That's what I will replace. And that should fix this exact problem. So, here I have rebuilt that connector with the new part from Toyota. I will put it all together, hook it up and we will see if I was correct about it. Now comes the real test. There were moments when she was running fine. You just heard a secondary air pump just whine. Only right now the <clears throat> RPM will settle. But this happened a week ago. I had her perfectly running and then she left and problem came back so I have that wire right here and I have access to it all the way to the injector number one and it's on purpose here before when I pulled up and down up and down or I tried to wiggle it this way it immediately triggered the misfire it will be right there Let's see. I will grab them and go up and down. Alright? Now, let's say it was not the connector and it's still in the wiring harness here. See both of them? See what I'm doing? That was before immediately creating problem. So, I think, guys, I got lucky again. It's nothing wrong with being lucky, correct? I personally prefer that. I can imagine how the owner will feel after so much wasted time and money that he was at the point that this engine might be gone. He didn't know it has a serious problem, could be eating itself, could be all kinds of stuff. So he was kind of down and I fully understand it's easy to give up on what something will take months and months and nobody can find the problem. And this is not a gun 
better. I'm not trying to paint the picture that I'm better than the other tech who gave up on it, right? He, he tried so many times, he said I can't and gave up on it. I'm not better than him. This is the second time it came. It just all worked out today. The vehicle finally had consistently showing me the problem and I kept doing the diagnostic steps one after another it was clearly related to the number one only and because it was here it helped me to find the problem so I hope many of you in the future will find this helpful if you do please always give it a thumb up please subscribe have a notification button so you know when the last video is coming out. I will keep filming all these things for you here in my shop. Thank you for watching, thank you for supporting this channel and have a great weekend my friend. Obviously this still continues with a test drive with the scanner watching for that P0301 possibly come back but it won't